And so many times, so many times, we know about God, but there's something else that we are serving. There's something else that we are serving. You know, I can tell all these Bible stories to my children, but if they look at my lifestyle and they see how I react, and they look at the relationship between me and my wife, and how we handle conflict, what do they see? Do they see God operating? Or do they see something else operating? He said, And build the altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement. And take the second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image which you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men from amongst his servants and did as the Lord said to him. But because he, because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day, he did it by night. Alright? So sometimes we have to hear and obey and, you know, the most important thing is he obeyed. He did it in the night, but he obeyed. And so many times when we have to do something that, is, that we know that we have to do, something that we have to deal with, we're afraid. We're afraid of what the consequences must be. But we must take the courage and push through and do it. We must hear and obey. You see, this young man, Gideon, had to break down the God that his father served. He had to break down the things that his father worshipped, which was not God. Now my question, one of the questions tonight is, who do you worship? You know, sometimes it's easy because we read the Bible and here's something that we can see. But sometimes we worship just like Gideon's dad. There's an idol in our house. Sometimes that idol is called the television. Sometimes that idol is called pride. Sometimes that, 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 that idol is called unforgiveness. And we are building this altar in our house. The altar of unforgiveness. You know, and we can teach our children everything, you know, and then when they come home, they just see this altar of unforgiveness. Because my wife burnt the food, and I like screamed at her. And she said, please forgive me, and I said, no, but I told you, I told you this was going to happen. And um, just the other day, we got ourselves a little... I don't know what you call it. But it's a little thing that works with magnetism. It saves power. And we put that thing on. Um, she wanted to make something in it, but we did not have the settings correct. But yes, it was a smoke. Smoke coming from the kitchen. Luckily, it was the vegetables that burned. The meat was still okay. <laughs> but your children can see this. They can see the way that you react. And they can see the way that I'm unforgiving towards my wife. And then when she wants to do something, I say, no, you remember last time, you tried this and it was a mess. And I bang her head against that, that, that altar of unforgiveness. I just want to remind her every time of the mistakes that she made because I don't want to forgive her. Sometimes there's the altar of self-approval. Or self-justification, you know. This, these two hands of mine, you know. I am where I am today because of these two hands of mine. I started, you know, washing. The, the old lady that stayed next to us, I started washing her car. And um, then I did it so great, you know. By the end of the month, I had to wash 20 cars. 
And then what happened after that? I got myself a deal and I got my friends involved and I became a businessman. I, I told them, okay, they can get 10 rand per car and I actually charged the people 30 rand a car. So I just made money, you know, and then I became so successful. I left school, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm now the successful owner of valets right across the world. Oh my goodness, somebody's getting excited. And it's because of these two hands of mine. I just want to ask, who, ga who gave you that idea? It's so easy to build the, the altar of, you know, me, myself, and I. I did it. You know, and those altars are standing in our houses. We need to break down those things. We need to humble ourselves. We need to, to deal with these things so that we can move forward to what God is saying. You see, these things will not just be holding us back. It will hold our children back as well. If we allow the stronghold of pride to be in our house, it will be in their house as well. It's our responsibility to start dealing with these things. Otherwise, when God wants to do something through our children, they will first come to our house to break down these strongholds. We need to deal with these things. We need to deal with unforgiveness. We need to deal with offense that so easily creeps in. You know, I'm giving my everything. You know, I'm even washing the dishes and putting the kid, kids through the bath, you know, and I don't even get a thank you. You know, not even a soft word. I'm coming straight from work. You know, and I'm doing all these things. It's so easy to take offense. It's so easy to take offense. We need to deal with these things so that God can use us. So that God can activate us. So that God can get the glory. You see, if this stronghold, if this pride thing is standing there, and um, you launched into success, you think it's because of, because of this. I'm self-righteous, you know, with these two hands of mine, it got me where I am today. But if you break down that thing, if you break down that pride, if you break down that selfishness, if you break down that unforgiveness, you will know it's only God. It's only God. So God spoke to Gideon. He had to do certain things. He had to deal with a couple of issues. All right? And now for the battle. Now for the battle. This awesome battle. Remember, we started off um, reading in, uh, in Judges about, yeah, in uh, Judges 7 verse 20, it says, Then the three companies blew on the trumpets and broke the pitchers. They held the torches in their left hands and the trumpet in their right hands for blowing, and they cried, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Now we're coming to this amazing battle. All right? And um, this is something that you must know now. You've dealt with the things now. All right? Now God is speaking to you. Now you must start to hear and obey. All right? Some of us are very intellectual. You know, some of us are very clever. I also thought I was clever. Every time I think I'm clever, something happens that just affirm God knows more. You know? You mustn't think that you're clever. You must just be obedient. Alright? Now these guys are entering into battle. Alright? Um, in Judges 7, in, um, in verse 2, and the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into your hands, lest Israel claim glory for it 
self against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Alright? So God is actually protecting them. God is actually protecting them from saying, I did it myself. Me, myself, and I. You know, I'm so great. I'm so cool. God is protecting them from that. He said, you're too many. Now, anybody that's intellectual will say to you, it makes more sense to go with many people into battle. All right? That's the world's wisdom. God says, no. There's too many people. He says in verse 3, Now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. Okay, excellent strategy. 22,000 people just deserted us. But we're amped. Awesome, the victory is ours. I would be running. I would be running. Right? Now there's only 10,000 people left. Okay? So the, 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 the most important thing is that God told Gideon. Okay? And Gideon heard, heard and he obeyed. Right? He didn't argue. He just did what God told him to do. He obeyed. And now all of a sudden things don't look so good anymore. You know, you're trusting the Lord for this financial breakthrough. Your salary is 2,000 rand. The Lord says, so 1,500 rand. That's my strategy. Yeah. I think I will argue a bit there. You know, we're trusting for this financial breakthrough. Now all of a sudden things are getting less. I, I see things going out. I see nothing coming in. Imagine how Gideon must have felt. They're on the verge of... War, and now all of a sudden, the people are getting fewer and fewer. And it's God doing it. 22,000 people are afraid. They turned around. I guess it's better for, for people that are afraid to just leave than to be there and to be afraid. 10,000 remains. But the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water and I will test them for you there. God is looking for quality. God is looking for quality, but the end, in the end, there's only 300 people. 300 people, all equipped with sn sniper rifles and night vision and hand grenades and mortars and... Um, no. 300 people carrying... Torches, trumpets, and pitchers. That's the battle equipment. I see why you're looking at me like that. I also think it's, it's not, it will not work. Right? They're going into battle. But you know why you're so calm. You know the end. Isn't that true? You know the end. They got victory. But in your situation, you don't know the end yet. You have to take the end by faith. Okay? You're giving out that 1,500 rand. All you see is the 500 rand that's still left. And then, depending on your bank, that can also, you know, bank costs and everything. And you don't know the end. It's not written up, but you have the example. So you have to go by faith and say, Lord, I'm trusting. I'm, I've heard your voice correctly, and now I'm obeying. It's going to cost me. I don't know. But I'm trusting you. See, there's no guarantee. It's not written up that, you know, Emil Fury, uh, the Lord told him to to give 5,000 rand and then he had one rand in the bank left and um, the next day the Lord provided him 50,000 rand. It's not written there. But it can 
be written up in my journal if I was ever challenged by that. But you know what I'm saying. 